Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News, the place where you can find all the latest information on your favorite rocket company. My name is Kevin, and today we're going to take a look at the work being done on Starhopper as SpaceX prepares it for its next launch. We'll dive in deep with a ton of new Starship information, discuss what's going on with CRS-18, SpaceX's last mission, as well as AMO-17, SpaceX's next mission. Then we'll finish things out with today's honorable mention. Let's get started. So just in case you weren't aware, Starhopper is a beast. Not only did the prototype vehicle survive its first 20 meter hop, but it has already been moved back into its position for its next 200 meter hop. Lab Padre got in their Cessna and did a flyover of the Boca Chica launch site the other day. And not only did they capture aerial footage of the scorched earth that Starhopper's single Raptor engine left behind, but they also spotted its new landing pad for what we can assume is its next hop, which has been confirmed to be August 12th, so long as preparations go as expected. If they don't, backup days have also been booked. Elon confirmed that he would do his Starship presentation in about two weeks. Now that tweet was a week ago, and now that we have Starhopper's next launch date, I'm gonna speculate that Elon's presentation will probably be sometime mid-August. Lab Padre also captured footage of the Starship site in Boca Chica, which revealed a couple additional bulkheads hidden away behind some shipping containers. And one bulkhead was placed inside the Starship prototype. These bulkheads are the top and bottom sections of the methane and liquid oxygen fuel tanks. But progress hasn't slowed for the Mark II Starship and Coco either. A recent aerial image taken of the construction yard showed both the upper and lower portions of the vehicle still sitting next to each other, but also unveiled that more sections have been built and are laid out at the far corner of the property. SpaceX recently filed their future plans for Starship Super Heavy with the EPA, and some interesting insights were found. For starters, as we noted in a previous episode, Starship and its Super Heavy booster will launch from a second launch mount on Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. This filing confirms the plans to have Starship land at Landing Zone 1, but also that SpaceX has aspirations to build a landing pad within the confines of the launch pad. Super Heavy is to land downrange on a drone barge ship, perhaps its own dedicated ship similar to Of Course I Still Love You and Just Read the Instructions, and the giant booster is expected to reach an altitude of about 425,000 feet and then on descent reach hypersonic speeds above Mach 6 before slowing to a subsonic speed below 25,000 feet before landing on the ship. An illustration of the re-entry trajectory was included, similar to the one Elon gave at his Dear Moon presentation, but SpaceX also noted that in the future they may launch Starship Super Heavy from Boca Chica, and further that the site provides the capability to launch Falcon 9s and Falcon Heavies. If any of you nerds would like to read the whole 250 page filing with the EPA, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. You're very welcome. Elon expressed confidence in his Starship Super Heavy plans by tweeting that orbital refueling is vital to humanity's future in space. More likely spacecraft to spacecraft as aircraft do aerial refueling than a dedicated depot, at least at first. Of course, he's referring to NASA's plans for a lunar space station, more about this in a second, but also that mailing Dragon Dock with space station is much harder than docking with our own ship for refueling. Not a problem. It seems as though NASA may be coming around to Elon's Starship project after all. At first they refused to acknowledge it, and then they did. But dare I say they may not be supporting it? Because NASA just announced that they have partnered with 13 US companies to mature industry-developed space technologies to help maintain American leadership in space. These partnerships are non-reimbursable, which just means NASA isn't paying for them to do anything, but focuses on teaming up to develop important technology that is vital to America's moon and Mars exploration approach. SpaceX was named twice, first to help advance the technology required to land large rockets on the moon, which includes assessing engine plume interaction with the surface of the moon. After watching Starhopper's 20 meter hop, can you imagine how much lunar dust just one single Raptor engine will displace on the surface of the moon? You'll be able to see the lunar dust storm from your backyard. And the second way NASA and SpaceX are teaming up is to advance technology for propellant transfer in orbit. And I quote, is an important step in the development of the company's Starship space vehicle. Boom, acknowledged. Hey, maybe the recent hop test got people talking over there at NASA. Just kidding, you know they were already talking about it. In fact, I interviewed a NASA engineer over on my Patreon page and he says that he admires SpaceX. He just hopes that they don't have a similar incident like they did with Apollo 1. It's funny that it wasn't even two weeks ago that Elon said SpaceX could take Starship to the lunar surface and leave NASA behind if need be. Well, Jeff DeWitt responded in a statement to Business Insider saying more power to him. I hope he does it. If he can do it, we'll partner with him and we'll get there faster. He added that it isn't about us doing it. It's about America doing it. He's got an American company. I'd love to partner with him and get that done. <laughs> yeah, America. He also said that the fact that Elon Musk is out working for this goal is great. And the fact that Jeff Bezos is out there working for this goal is great as well. Jeff Bezos is the CEO of Blue Origin, which just a couple months ago revealed their lunar lander called Blue Moon. He's also the CEO of Amazon. 
but we'll get back to that later. The Cargo Dragon capsule that recently launched to the ISS has docked safely to the station for its record-breaking third time. Elon tweeted raw footage of the booster's re-entry and landing for the mission, and the sound of the sonic booms and engines igniting were quite inspiring. and for only the second time ever, the booster's landing legs were retracted. This was a capability of the new Block 5 version of the Falcon 9 that allowed for rapid reusability, something that previous versions of the booster couldn't do. They had to take the landing legs completely off the rocket. The next launch is AMOS-17, a mission to deploy a satellite to geostationary orbit. The booster has already completed its first static fire in preparation for the launch. However, a suspect valve in the Merlin engine needed to be replaced. So a second static test has been rescheduled for the booster and no official launch date has been confirmed at this time. Although I've read that the earliest opportunity will be Monday. Now it's time for the day's honorable mention. Do you remember when SpaceX launched Demo-1, the first flight of the crew Dragon capsule? Of course you do. And do you remember the cute zero gravity indicator plush toy, buddy? Of course you do. Well, now you have the opportunity to own those pinchable cheeks and all for just $19.99. Wow. What's really special about this version of Buddy is that on his butt talks, he has the words made on earth by humans. In the description below, it will take you right to the Amazon page where you can buy one for yourself and maybe your friend or your dog. See, I told you we get back to Amazon. But the best part is, is that my channel is now an Amazon affiliate, which means if you use that link below to do any shopping on Amazon, no matter what it is, I'll get a cut of that percentage. So if you're a fan of the channel, or maybe you just find my SpaceX and the news videos useful, go ahead and support us by abusing that link. Just, just think of it this way. Usually when you do Amazon shopping, part of your money goes to Jeff Bezos. But in this case, if you use that link, that money that will be going to Jeff Bezos will instead go to me to do SpaceX videos. It's almost poetic. Well, that's all I have for you guys and gals today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you right back here for the Amos 17 launch, hopefully in the next couple days. Keep an eye on my Twitter for updates. Godspeed.